why is charm so attractive? Why do we even not just see right through it? And why are we so drawn to the attraction of a charming narcissist? Well, number one, when someone is treating you in a charming way, when they are throwing the charm on you, it feels kind of like a delightful feeling. It feels like you're getting attention. It feels like someone gets you. It feels like someone's just showing you all this focus and attention. And there is a fascinating allure to people who are charming. So they, the narcissist is being charming and, and, and throwing that attention onto you. And it can feel very exciting and very connected and very close and very uh, like it gives you all these feelings that you've been wanting to have in your life. Um, they will wow you even if they don't have traditional good looks or you don't even find them attractive. Like you can physically see them in a room and think nothing. And when they turn the charm on, suddenly you're attracted to them. Why is that? Well, it's, it's basically when you're under the spell of a charmer, you feel a rapport with them. You feel a connection. Like they get you. And basically what they're doing is they're using their mirroring abilities. Everybody mirrors a little bit. Okay. When you meet a new friend, you're just like, oh my gosh, you like dancing? I like dancing. Wow, we must be friends. You know, that's kind of normal behavior. What a narcissist does, and especially the more charming types, is they will look for the things in you like lightning fast that they see a way to pretend and mirror back to you exactly what it is you are. So they're looking for the parts of you that you are kind of showing the world, right? And then they'll mirror that back to you. Well, what that creates in you is a feeling of instant camaraderie an instant rapport and connection. And so they're basically using the things they're learning about you to mirror back at you and then gain your trust, your admiration, your attention, your focus, and you lose yourself in the experience because again, it feels like a kind of delightful feeling of being seen. When you are in a state of mind to be craving attention, when you're in a state of mind where you have low self-esteem, where you're lonely, where you're sad, where you're feeling like you just want attention, everybody wants attention once in a while, it's okay. It's when you're in a state of need for attention. A charming narcissist can slip right in and give you so much of that attention, which we know is love bombing, right? But in the moment, it feels like connection because they're not always the most attractive, good looking person in the room. They're not always overt with it. It's subtle sometimes. Um, you feel the connection way too fast, okay? Basically, when you've had that happen, you feel like you've known that person for a long time or like your whole life. You feel you instantly drop your guard. You instantly create this bond with a stranger. The charming narcissist, especially when you are in a state of low self-esteem or needing attention or basically you're just hungry for connection because you're lonely or, or whatever else is going on with you, that's a perfect place for them to slip in and pretty much get inside your head really fast. They, they use what they see in you uh, on you to attract you. Does that make sense? And um, oh, so one thing with narcissists like this is they're really good at it. They're really good at seeing what someone is, who they are and what they need, like in a second. And they're able to, it's like a radar. They can pick up the body language. They can pick up the, the they can pick up if someone's needy. They can pick up if someone is lonely. They can pick up all these things. And that's when they use it for their advantage to because what they're wanting is supply. They're wanting your attention and your focus onto them. They're wanting to hook you so that you won't see right through them and see who they are, right? And they want it and they can maintain this charm for a certain amount of time in order to, for to get you to believe that's who they really are. What's wrong with it is it's creating a false sense of relationship, a false sense of connection and a false sense of, of trust. And it gives the other person, the narcissist in this case, it gives them power. It gives them the power to control you from the moment they meet you. 
They don't even need to groom you. They can charm you right into believing they are something that they're not. They can charm you right into believing what they need you to see them as so that they can later have you as supply. Because a narcissist has no empathy and because a narcissist is not going to be accountable and they're only in it for themselves, they're not actually charming you so that you have this happy fairy tale relationship. They're charming you so that you believe they're something. And if you believe they're that thing, how much power do they have when they flip and they only give you that thing once in a while? They're creating a need in you for you to feel what they're giving you in that time. The beginning's always wonderful. It's so charming. It's so great, right? They're creating in you a need to have that later in your life. This is basically a form of love bombing for some narcissists, okay? They're, they are giving you all this attention in the same way another one might buy you gifts or, you know, other forms of love bombing. It's a form of love bombing. It's a form of grooming. They're twisting the truths, right? They're twisting the truth of who they are. And when they flip it around, you are stuck. You're already trauma bonded. Tra what is trauma bonding in simple words? Trauma bonding is, well, it's created from the love bombing and the devaluing, from the giving and taking, from the pushing and pulling. It is a, a bond that is created from that experience rather than a healthy attachment. It's an unhealthy attachment created from creating trauma and then resolving trauma. So they create this trauma, they resolve the trauma, they create the trauma, they resolve the trauma. So basically they are the source of your pain, they are the remedy for your pain. That cycle does stuff to your brain. In simple terms, it cre it, it creates brain activity, brain chemicals. I have a whole lots of videos on it. You can go watch for a longer explanation that then become a sort of pattern and cycle in your life when you have certain brain chemistry rise, only certain things resolve it, and then, you know, it's a whole cycle. So it's what ties you to something you know is wrong for you. So let's look at some habits of how a narcissist is charming, how they use charm to manipulate. They use charm to manipulate through some habits. I mean, there are some things you can look for. And I'm not saying that when people do these things, that means they're a narcissist. It's looking for the patterns. It's looking for the repeated behaviors. And it's trusting your gut at the same time. And you'll know what I'm talking about when I start naming these things. So mirroring, like I said, everybody mirrors, it's natural to mirror other human beings. Okay, but the way a narcissist does it, it's used in this kind of obvious way, once you know what you're looking for, they, they don't feel genuine in what they're saying when they're mirroring. Um, and we can do a whole video on mirroring sometime, but that is one way. Another thing they do is the stare. The stare. It's not the stare that comes later that's the dead eye stare. It's the charming lure you in snake eye stare that, that gets you almost hypnotized. I can remember being having that look. I came out of a bathroom or something. I was with the psychopath and um, I didn't know him too for too long at that point. So the charm was still being poured on pretty heavy and came out of a bathroom and I could feel him staring from literally across a room. And I don't mean like in a romantic way, in a creepy way, in a way that was like, you're trying to force me to look at you above everything else that I'm seeing in this room. And in a way that is really attracting me in a, in a like a hypnotic way and in a way it's kind of creepy. So if you know what you're looking for, it feels really off. If you don't know what you're looking for, it feels like you're getting all the attention in the world. And um, it can be, like I said, it can be attractive and alluring because of that. They share secrets too soon. They will get intimate too fast. Intimate, I mean, uh, emotionally intimate, emotionally close, trying to make you feel like you're getting a piece of them when it's actually not. Does that make sense? They'll get you to share secrets too soon. They'll talk about things that go that are so deep sometimes in a way to sort of charm you into um, having these deep conversations that then allow you to reveal parts of yourself you probably wouldn't with someone. Sometimes you'll walk away and think, why did I say all that? They will playfully push your boundaries. If they're charming, they're not going to push your boundaries in a way that, that turn you off. They're 
push your boundaries in a way that make you feel like you're being sneaky or you're being, yo, oh, we'll just cheat. Sort of like if you have a cookie on a diet, you know, it's wrong and you're going to sneak it anyway. And it's kind of, ha ha ha. I went into the corner. The, that kind of boundary pushing where it's playful and it's, they don't make you eat cookies, but you know what I mean? They, they'll push it in a way where you're, um, you're going against your, your moral code, your ethical code, your boundaries for yourself just enough and it feels playful. That That's a big one that they'll do. Um, and then another one, we'll just stop with this one, is oh, the over-complimenting, the over, the gushing, love bombing, over-complimentary, um, wow, you are just the most amazing person. You know, they'll charm you by making you feel charming, like making you feel like the one who is important. 